In this Blender tutorial I will show you how I duplicate objects along a path without distortion. Other tutorials can be found in my playlists. Before version 2.8 there was an option for duplicating an object along a path. Um, right now the only option you've got is to create an array and curve the objects along a path but that literally curves each object so you end up with odd shapes so um, I've always done it slightly differently because I like to have a bit of um, uh, adaptability if you like so I tend to do things a bit different than some of the tutorials show you um, how to do these things um, plus the other thing is if I wanted to have different objects along this path the way I do it you can do that so I could have this football here and I don't know a goal post there or whatever it, it, it's a slightly different way of doing it little bit time consuming but it once you get used to the shortcuts it's not that hard and it's quite quick anyway I won't go into any more the first thing you need to do is um, just hold down shift followed by a and next to mesh check to see if you've got something called single vert if you haven't come up to edit and then select preferences now make sure the add-ons tab is selected then in the search box type the word extra now what you're looking for is add curve extra objects place a tick in this box and while you're there you might as well select this one as well there's some good options in this one as well I think the maths option is here as well um, anyway close your box down and again shift followed by a and then you should see something called single vert next to this add single vert and what this will do is add a single vertice it'll also put you into edit mode so just press tab on your keyboard to go into object mode Look for the little wrench, modifiers properties, select this. Select add modifier and then select array. Now you won't see any duplicates until you place a tick in the box next to constant offset. And at present you'll see two vertices. Now if you open up the little arrow or select the little arrow next to this constant offset, you can change the distance I wouldn't worry too much about this because you can do after you've applied this you can change the distance anyway you can change the distance along the path but what I would do in the count box got a little arrow select this until you've got the number that you want or manually type it in so I'm going to go for 10 and then select the little drop down arrow and then apply now I could set this up the origin to the cursor and everything but I'm not going to bother because um, I just want to quickly go through this tutorial so once you've got your um, vertices um, or your number of vertices uh, applied come back to add modifier and then select curve and in the curve object box select in this case it's a numbers uh, path this could be a bezier curve could be a, anything as long as it's a curve or a path you can select it so that's, I'm going to select numbers path and what this has done is place these vertices along the path so if I select the move tab here and it, they always unless you change it here it's always everything's on the X axis so if I just hold my left mouse button down over the arrow, red arrow I can move these along only problem is the origin will be over here but you can it doesn't matter for this tutorial now if I hold down S followed by X I can increase the gap so I'll just increase it a bit in this direction and again using the red arrow I can move these along and maybe 
S followed by X again increases the size. I'm going to rush this a bit and then line everything up again. And for this tutorial, that will do. Now, once you're happy with the number of vertices or the position, the gap, drop down arrow, select this, and then apply. Now, if you press tap on your keyboard, then A to make sure all your vertices are selected. You'll need to make sure that you've got your vertices select tab se selected as well. Press P and this will bring your separate options up and then select by loose parts. Press tab on your keyboard to come back to object mode. And they still should all be selected. So if you come up to this sort of chain link here it says transport transport pivot point select this and then select individual origins then come up to object and then next to set origin or origin to geometry what should happen is when you select each vertice it should have its own separate origin. I'm going to just select the curve and drag it out the way. Makes it easier to select the uh, vertices. So if I select this vertice here and then press Shift followed by S, I get some options. I'm going to select cursor to selected. Now I'm going to select this football and press Shift S. And then selection to cursor. Now I could add another object if I wanted to and, and add it to this next um, vertice, but I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is just select the next vertice, Shift S, cursor to selected. I'm going to select the football. Oh, by the way, if you want to change the size, now is probably a good time to change the size by pressing S on your keyboard. So, I don't know, make it a little bit smaller. So, I'm going to just, with the football selected, hold down Shift followed by D, hit Return, then Shift S, and then Selection to Cursor. And literally, carry on doing this until you've got a, a sort of a tail of um, or a path of your object. So I'll just carry on doing this a minute and I'll come back. Once you've placed your objects to um, each individual vertex, you can uh, Check if you're happy with the shape along the curve. Um, with the curve selected, I would just press Shift S, and then actually you need to center the cursor. So that's an interesting thing to do. Make sure that the cursor is actually central. So just press Shift S and select cursor to world, and then. With this object selected, just press Shift S again and then selection to cursor. This is a good way of moving things out of the way if you want to. Um, I, I often move things out of the way by linking the. Um, make sure that the origin is in the right place and then making the origin locked to the cursor. Anyway, so that's basically all there is to it. You've got separate objects you can rotate them if you want do what you want with them and like I said I could if I wanted to have different objects along the path um, and that's how I would do it the only other thing I would say is if, if this path was something like a series of lamp posts and you wanted it so that each lamp post was um, 
from the uh, base if you like or the x-axis coming upwards you might want to learn how to reset the origin so that it's actually at the base of the lamp post I will do a tutorial in the next few weeks on mucking around with the origins and pivot points but for now I think this will probably do and as I usually say hopefully that's helped someone thank you for watching cheers <laughs>